Hey guys, welcome back to Andrew Invest. Earnings week has started this week, so I hope your investments are doing really well, but I wanna do a slightly different video today. Have you ever wondered why you're paying more tax than the colleague who sits next to you doing the exact same job? Or how about why billionaires never have to pay any inheritance tax when they die? Well, then this is the video for you. Today, I want to give my top three reasons for why the UK tax system is so unfair and compare it especially to the US, which has a pretty unfair reputation, in my opinion, for having a very unfair tax scheme. So this government is not going to raise the rates of income tax, national insurance, or VAT. Instead, our first step is to freeze personal tax thresholds. Reason number one, the massive insistence of income taxes as being the best way to increase revenue for the government. Now, in the UK, we have a need to balance the budget and balance the books in a way that the US doesn't have because we don't have the exorbitant privilege anymore of having the world's global reserve currency like the US does. But there is a massive focus on income taxes rather than wealth taxes. And this not only increases wealth inequality in the country, but it also massively decreases economic activity. Think about it like this. If you are 50, nearly retired, and you have a part-time job which is paying around 50K a year, if you were to pick up any more work and work, let's say, four or five days a week, you would be paying nearly 50% tax on any additional income you have. So would you rather just relax and do what you want to during those extra days of the week or take a job? You probably wouldn't do the extra work. These are the exact kind of people that the government has been on the record as trying to convince to do more work or go back into work after having an early retirement. In contrast, if you were to amass a large sum of wealth in the UK, you don't have to pay into the system, but can still receive all of the benefits that the state provides. Free healthcare, roads, and so on. Now, I personally don't think this is very fair. You may be saying to me, if somebody has amassed a large sum of wealth, then they must have paid into the system at some point, with income tax, for example. But whilst that may be true in many cases, there's many other cases where people have just inherited money and not had to pay any tax on it at all. I also don't think that is very fair. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not proposing implementing wealth taxes without any kind of benefit for the average person. I want the amount raised in wealth taxes to be reduced equivalently from income taxes. I personally think this would massively stimulate the economy and be a fairer system for everyone. In the US, for example, income taxes are much lower, but wealth taxes are much higher. And what kind of wealth taxes am I talking about? Well, property taxes. So Veronica, you know, the amount somebody pays in property taxes often depends on the assessment on their property. What is the assessment and what is it based on and how does it figure into the tax bill? The assessment is based on multiple factors, including your square footage, things like how many bedrooms you have, amenities you have, such as a pool or not. All those things factor in your neighbors, kind of what's customary for the area also plays a part. So it's multiple things that factor into the assessment. That may be ringing some bells for you from the UK. It's very similar to council tax. The more your house is worth, the more tax you pay. But it's actually vastly different beneath the surface. In the US, it's a percentage-based tax. Each state varies, but on average, you pay around 1% of your property's total value per year in tax. So if your property is worth $500,000, you'll pay around $5,000 per year. But if you are, say, living in Manhattan, New York, and you have a fancy penthouse suite, you might have, let's say, a $500 million house. And on that, you'd be paying $5 million per year which is fair, right? Since your house is worth so much and will be appreciating at more than 1% per year anyway, just through property appreciation. But in the UK, the highest amount of tax you can pay, regardless of what property, is just shy of 5,000 pounds per year. That means that if you own an apartment in the Shard worth $200 million or pounds, 
then you'd only be paying less than £5,000 a year in council tax. In addition to that, council tax is not paid by the property owner if the house is rented out. It is paid by the rental. Whereas in the US, property taxes are always paid by the person who owns the house. regular Thursday surgery is the Conservative MP George Osborne. Let's go straight, George, to our first caller. It is Bill. I mean, the one piece of advice I would give to uh, Bill is there are some pretty clever financial products which enable you to, in effect, pass on your home or the value of your home to your uh, son or daughter and, uh, well, and then get personal care paid for by the state. I probably shouldn't be advocating this on. Right. Reason number two, inheritance tax. Inheritance tax is one of the few wealth taxes that the UK does have alongside council tax. But as George Osborne says himself, our former chancellor, by the way, there are numerous ways to get around having to pay it. There's so many loopholes and provisions within the law that it effectively is a voluntary tax, as he said himself. Now, personally, I don't think this is very fair because it ends up only being the middle and working classes that have to pay this wealth tax, whereas the extremely wealthy don't have to pay anything as they have very clever planning tools and financial advisors that allows them to avoid this. Just look at the Duke of Westminster. He inherited nearly 10 billion pounds worth of a property empire in London. And how much inheritance tax did he pay? Zero. Now, inheritance tax is pretty much one of the most universally despised taxes, even when people who don't stand to gain much from it are polled. But I would say that the US system is a lot more generous than the UK one in many ways. For example, you only have to pay gifts and estate tax on the value of your assets above $10 million upon death, whereas in the UK, you have to pay the tax on any assets above £325,000. That affects a lot more middle class and poorer people, especially when you take into consideration the value of their houses. It's the really big impactful change that's coming forward. Currently, you repay until you've paid back what you borrowed or the longest of 30 years. For new starters from this September, from England, it will be 40 years. Yeah. And in practice, that means the vast majority will be repaying for most of their working lives. And the way to think about it, really, I mean, we talk about it as a debt. It doesn't work like a debt for most. Mm. What it works like is a 9% additional tax above £25,000 for up to 40 years. Only the highest earners will clear it substantially. Last of all, student loans. As Martin Lewis says, it's more of a graduate tax for the people who can't afford to pay the fees up front than a loan, really, because it gets cancelled after a certain amount of time and you aren't likely to pay it off. But the reason why it's so unfair is that it affects each progressive generation worse than the last. The generation before mine, there was only £3,000 of fees each year and people could easily pay that off. Whereas for my generation, you have to pay 9% per year for around 30 years. And now students are being forced to basically pay a 9% tax for 40 years. So you can be working with a colleague who's only a couple of years older than you, maybe has the same amount of output and has the same rank as you, and you'll be paying tax for longer or a higher tax amount than they are on the same salary. How is that fair? When you both have the same degree, that doesn't make sense at all. Now, I do think that a graduate tax is one of the better ideas for funding higher education because then higher middle and low income earners after the degree will all have to contribute towards the cost of the degree, whereas right now it's pretty much only middle earners. But to compare the UK, the current UK system to the US system, what I would say is that in both systems, higher earners get off easily, they can pay off the debt, pretty quickly. But in the UK, lower earners basically face no consequences for doing a pointless degree. You don't have to pay any money back if you don't earn over a certain amount. Whereas that's not the case in the US. And it does incentivize people to do pointless degrees and just waste their time. 
So those are the three main reasons I think the UK tax system is so unfair and lessons we can learn from the US one. But if you did agree or disagree with any of my points, please let me know or if I missed anything, also please let me know in the comments below. If you did enjoy the video, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.